Right then guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for what should hopefully be the final video in my What Matters Most series. Now I started my What Matters Most series around 18 months ago on Gran Turismo 4. The aim of it being to find out how influential each component of a car is to its overall one lap speed. The initial 10 episode series did leave the question over which of either a light and not very powerful car or a heavy but powerful car that have an equal power to weight ratio is quicker. Now I did attempt to solve this question again on Gran Turismo 4 in March of this year. That video showed conclusively that heavier and more powerful cars are significantly quicker than their lighter and less powerful competitors. However, a few people did comment that this test was flawed in a few ways, one of them being in the track that I used, Suzuka, and the fact it is a power track. So now, in this video, I will finally put the question to bed. Three cars of varying performance will do one lap with 200 kilograms of weight added on, and then do another lap with that 200 kilogram ballast taken off again, but have their power limited so that the power to weight ratio is equal to when they had the ballast on. Also, I've changed the track from Suzuka, which you guys correctly said is more of a power based circuit, to Sukuba. With a shorter straight and tighter corners, it should level out the playing field. Of course, lightening a car generally improves its acceleration, handling, fuel economy, tyre usage and braking distances, whereas improving a car's power only improves its acceleration and top end speed. But the question is, is which is more effective? So anyway, with all that out of the way, it's on to the first car that we will be using for this test in this video. Now we're starting off slow by using a 1988 Honda Accord Coupe, selected purely because it's slow, there's genuinely no other reason as to why I chose it. So the standard car has 117 horsepower, weighs 1.22 tonnes, which is 95.2 horsepower per tonne. If you add 200 kilograms to the car, the power to weight ratio falls to 82.39 horsepower per tonne. To get the same figure with the car's standard weight, you have to restrict the car to only 85.9% of its power, which is exactly 100 brake horsepower. So now we have an Accord that is heavier than the standard one, and one that is less powerful than the standard one, to the extent that they have near identical power to weight ratios, let's see which is quicker around one lap of Sukuba. Right then, so we got the heavier, more powerful car on the left and the lighter, less powerful car on the right as they start their laps now. And obviously, as you can see, both going up towards the first corner of the powerful car should have the advantage in this. But breaking down, as you can see, the powerful car, the heavier one, has locked up its wheels, the lighter car staying much tighter to the apex. But going down towards the second corner, this is where the powerful car is going to, is going to benefit from its extra power, of course lightness you know aids acceleration but eventually you'll get to a point where power overcomes you know the lightness and going around the second corner again the lighter car just gets stopped and going around the corner much easier it's a much easier car to drive as well as looking marginally quicker at this point stopping under the Dunlop arch as you can see the light car is a good few feet ahead at this point there's very little in it but the lighter car at pretty much the halfway mark of the lap is in the lead but we're coming up to the point where the powerful car is going to rain back at some time, surely. Going into this tight 180 degree hairpin corner, again, the lighter car closer, tighter to the apex, getting around the corner much easier, much quicker, but now going down the back straight, here's where the power is going to take advantage. But as you can see, looking at the speedometers, the lighter car is going quicker, but of course it's further down the straight, so it's, it's a head on track position, and right now it's looking marginally ahead on speed. Going around the last corner, and both cars staying tight to the apex, although the heavier car running out wide there because of the extra mass, it's got to lug around and the lighter car has done it and it's 1-0 to the lighter cars and there's no surprise there considering how difficult it looked to drive the more powerful but heavier Accord. So there we saw that the lighter, less powerful car was quicker, but by how much exactly? Well, the heavier, more powerful car did a lap time of 119.631. The lighter and quicker car beat that time by almost 7 tenths of a second 
a 118.935, so a small but certainly significant margin in favour of the lighter cars there. So that means it's 1-0 to the lighter, less powerful cars in this best of three showdown. So on to round two, which features a more performance oriented car than the 1988 Accord we just saw. So now the car we'll be looking at is the 2014 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray, specifically the 15th anniversary edition that I got from pre-ordering Gran Turismo 6. So this car as standard has 524 horsepower and weighs 1.5 tonnes, which is 349.33 brake horsepower per tonne. Now if you add 200 kilograms to that, the power to weight ratio falls to 308.24 horsepower per tonne. That same power to weight ratio can be achieved with the car's standard weight if you limit the car to 88.2% of its power, which is 462 brake horsepower. So again, let's see which one is quicker, the weighed down powerful one or the lighter, less powerful one. So once again, the more powerful car on the left, the lighter car on the right. And in this cockpit cam, they cross the line now to start their first lap. As you can see, the lighter car going up towards the first corner slightly quicker. They're breaking down quicker and staying slightly tighter to the line. The powerful car getting a much more bigger drift out of the corner, which is unsurprising considering the extra power and extra weight. So just generally, is a bigger mass being lugged around by a bigger force. Of course, that's going to be difficult to handle. The powerful car staying tighter to the apex though that time, but you just get the impression that the lighter car once again is quicker to drive. And as you can see, there is very, very little in it at this point. But as you can see, the lighter car, he's already turned his steering wheel with straight at this point, which is going to get him a better run out of the corner towards the tight hairpin, which is where the powerful cars should come into play, provided they can get a good exit out. Both cars tight towards the apex, a powerful car running out wide there, again getting a much bigger drift there. And just again, as I said, a more powerful force lugging around a bigger weight is more difficult to drive. And of course there's an element of driver skill involved in this and driver preference. But both cars running out wide there, including the lighter car. But it looks like the lighter car just about going to do it. It's a good way ahead at this point and there you go. 2-0 to the lighter cars by an even bigger gap than we saw with the Honda Accords. So there you have it, once again the lighter version of a car was quicker than its more powerful counterpart. The gap was just over 1 second, with the heavier car's lap time being around a 1 minute 2 dead. The lighter Stingray completed the lap 2 thousandths of a second under a 1 minute 1. So once again the lighter car had a significant advantage on its powerful counterpart. And so on to the final car I will be testing and it's an Audi R8. Not the supercar, but the LMP racer from 2005, used by Team Orica. Of course, as a former Le Mans racer, it is very light and very powerful, having 788 horsepower and weighing only 0.95 tonnes, and thus having a power to weight ratio of 829.47 horsepower per tonne. No surprise then that it came fourth in the 24 hours of Le Mans with Frank Montagny, Jean-Marc Gounon and Stefan Ortelli at the helm. Or did they come third? The game certainly seems to think that they came third, despite every other source saying that they got fourth. It's probably just PlayStation bias, but anyway, back onto the topic of the video. If you add 200 kilograms to the car, then it weighs 1.15 tonnes, and the power to weight ratio falls massively to 685.22 horsepower per tonne. Similarly, if you restrict the car to 91.5% of its power, which is 721 brake horsepower, you get a near equal power to weight ratio. So after the last two cars have shown that lightness is more effective than power, does that fact remain in such a performance oriented car, which is both very powerful and very light? So we all know the drill by now, the heavier car on the left, the lighter car on the right, and they're both going to start their laps now. And it looks like both cars, there's not a lot to tell between them at the moment, both cars looking up there, and in fact the powerful car actually getting tighter to the apex, but much more squirrely out of the corner, which again is just 
something you can overcome with driver skill, but it's just easier to drive a lighter car. And this was the best lap. I did multiple laps with all of the cars, and this was the best one I achieved with both cars. Coming up towards the Dunlop Arch, as you can see, the lighter car significantly ahead at this point. But again, we're coming up to the part of the lap which does favour powerful cars. The back straight and going around the sweeping corner to go back to end the lap, or to start the new lap. And again, going around the hairpin, the lighter car a bit squibbly out of there, the powerful car a much cleaner run out of the corner. Looking at the speedos though, the lighter car just so much quicker down the straight, and maybe that's because it's so much further down the straight at this point. Going around the last corner, both cars are way off from the apex, but it doesn't matter as the lighter car has already finished his lap away ahead of the heavier and more powerful version. So there you go. With all three cars, the lighter variant was quicker than the equivalent heavier but more powerful variant. So as we saw there, the lighter Audi R8 LMP was a second a lap quicker than the heavier one, with the lap time for the lighter car being 49.3 seconds compared to 50.3 seconds in the heavier car. And so that means this video can be concluded with a solid result, 3-0 in favour of the lighter cars. And it should also settle the score between Colin Chapman's philosophy and Enzo Ferrari's philosophy when they were both in charge of their teams in Formula 1, with Colin Chapman favouring lightness and Enzo Ferrari thinking powerful engines were all you need to build a competitive race car. And so with that, this video is done, and also the What Matters Most series is done. The 10 videos I originally made at the start of 2015, then the later B-Spec video on Gran Turismo 4, the recent video looking at the tyres and brakes further, and now the two videos comparing lightness to power means all of the questions this series raised have finally been answered. And with that guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, and hopefully it did right all the wrongs in the last video that all you guys pointed out. So with that, I'll end off this video and the What Matters Most series, and so I'll see you guys for whichever video I put out next. So I'll see you then.